Greetings viewers and welcome to today's info sharing session. We will be covering the general ledger purge and the general ledger archive features in Sagestone Revolution. Now, very importantly is that the GL archive and GL purge have got two completely different characteristics and are two separate features. And let's just see exactly what those characteristics and features are. So first up, we've got the option to do a GL archive. So I'm going to go through to my common module. I'm going to go through to maintenance, company details. And under my counting periods, I've got year one to five, commencing from 2016 up until 2020. So I'm going to go do an archive in my first financial year. But let's just go do a couple of transactions first. Right, so I'm going to go through to my general ledger and process a general journal in my first financial year. Right, so it's a case of going to general ledger and transactions, journal batches, new batch, and I'm going to go and process a transaction in my first financial year. Right, so right, so I've got my transactions in my journal batch. Validate the batch, all is in order, and I'm going to the batch. There we go. And the transaction has been completed. Now I'm going to go to my reports and general ledger and trial balance. And on my filter, I'm going to specify year number one. And I'm then going to be able to just run the or view by trial balance. Just so it preview the trial balance. And there we have the transaction that I've processed in my first financial year. If I then go to my account transactions, and I've got the details there, I'm just going to go find correct date, the correct date range. And preview, and there we have our transaction which was processed. At this point, I'm then going to go do general ledger archive. Now, what the archive process does is it takes the transactions in the archive year and moves them to a separate location within the database. Those transactions can then be viewed for the archive year. However, no transactions can take place once a year has been archived. I'm then going to go through to my maintenance and a general ledger and go to the general ledger archive option. And here I've got a couple of options. So firstly, it's very important that you have all users exit the database. Next, you need to make a backup of your data, which is absolutely important. And once a backup has been made, you need to specify which year you want to archive. So I'm gonna say in this instance, year number one, and the backup has been made, so I can continue, okay. Once again, just a backup warning message, very important to make that backup, and I can now continue. Right, so the archive has been processed successfully. Obviously, if you have a large volume of transactions in the archive year, it may take some time to complete the archiving process. Right, so I can say OK to that, and it tells me no errors were found. Uh, it does create a log file once the archive has been done, and I can go view the log file just to see the processes that took place during the archive being completed. So I'm going to just say no to viewing the log file. And let's just go see what has happened. So I'm going to go back to my common company details. And under my counting period, you'll notice is that year one has now been marked as being archived. Let's see the impact of the year being archived. 
Right, so I'm going to go to my general ledger and try process a general journal in the archived financial year. Right, so I'm going to go to my general ledger module, transactions, and journal batches. It's a new batch. And I'm going to go once again, find the financial year, different month, and let's just go find another account. Right, so there's my transaction. I'm now going to validate the batch before posting. Right, so as you can see, I can't process the batch simply because it tells me that transactions to the specified date range have been archived. So therefore, as I was mentioned previously, is that no transactions can be processed to an archived financial year. So I'm going to go say close and not say the changes. And I'm going to then go back to my reports in a general ledger, trial balance. And what you notice is that I do, under my year filter, financial year filter, I can still go select year number one. I've then got my date range there for my archived year. And I'm going to preview. And I've still, I can still view the transactions that took place within my archived financial year. If I then go to my account transactions report, um, I can, I've once again got my details of my financial year, and there's the account the posting was done to. I then preview that, and the transaction is still available for viewing. Right. So in this instance, I can still go view transactions that were processed in the archived year but certainly not go process transactions in that archived year. Right, so I'm going to close this and let's just go see what happens if I go back to common. Right, so company details and accounting periods, my year has been archived. Now what you notice is that my year five runs up until December 2020. Now I'm just going to go and process a transaction in the new financial year, and we'll see what the implications are, what the impact is. General ledger, transactions, journal batches, A new batch, and I'm now going to say OK, and I'm going to process a transaction in my current financial year. So I'm going to say, let's just say, for example, accounting fees. Right, so transaction in, my, in the current financial period or current financial year, validate, and it tells me that the specified date is off the closing date of the last period. So I need to now go and add a financial year onto my database. I can process transactions for my current period. So I'm just going to not save that and revert back to my common company details, back to accounting periods, and what you notice is the option that says add financial year. Right, so I'm going to click on that option. 
you notice, it's going to give me details about the implications of adding a financial year to my database. Say so yes, and as you can see, I've now got a new year that's been created. If I expand the year, it's going to give me the breakdown of my financial periods for my current financial year. So quick and easy, simply use the Add Financial Year option, and I'm going to, and the new year is going to be created. Right, so let's just go back to our general ledger. And now we can see the implication after adding a new financial year. Right, so I'm going to go and process that journal transaction again. New batch, and let's just go specify an account there. And I'll validate the batch. And as you can see, the batch is successfully validated and I can process the transaction simply because I now have an accounting period which incorporates the financial date ranges of my current financial year. And post and update the transaction. Right, so that's taken care of the GL archive and the adding of a new financial year. Let's move on to the general ledger purge feature. So back to my common and company details, counting periods. So at this point, I've got my new financial year and year one has now been archived. I'm now going to archive some big point. I'm going to purge my first financial year. So that means I need to go to my general ledger maintenance and we're going to go to the general ledger purge feature. Right, so once again, it's essential to make a backup. Firstly, have the user exit the application and then backup, make a backup of your data. At this point, you just specify which financial year you want to purge. So I'm going to say year number one. And very importantly, information about the accumulated profit when the purge is undertaken. So once again, I specify the account, in this case, the accumulated profit, and very importantly, the account type must be set to retained earnings. There we have it. And the transaction code is going to be JNL for ledger journals. Right, so once that's been specified, I can continue. Just a message about the backup. And I can say continue. And now the purge is being run. So the purge has been successfully completed. Obviously, if you've got a large volume of transactions in your specific purge year, it may take a while to complete. Right, that's been completed. I've now got the ability to view the log file if, if applicable. I'll say no. And let's just go through to our common company details. And if I go to my accounting periods, you'll notice is that the year, my first financial year has been marked as archived and purged. Just see what the implications are with regards to viewing transactions in a purge financial year. Right, so I'm going to go back to general ledger and to reports. And let's just have a look at our trial balance after the purge has taken place. So trial balance. And what you notice now is that under my financial year filter, year one is not available for selection. And if I then go to my account transactions, I'm going to look at my period range. And you'll notice is that 
the period dates for my purge financial year are no longer available for selection. So, in conclusion, it simply means is that after the year has been purged, those transactions have now been deleted and are, long, and are no longer available in the database. So, let's just do a quick recap. A general ledger archive means is that the transactions in the archived year have been moved to a separate location in the database. However, you still can go view reports for the archived financial year. When it comes to general ledger purge, the transactions in that purged year have now been deleted and no longer available. So therefore, no option to go and view reports for that purge financial year. And then finally, with regards to adding a financial year, obviously it's simply a case of going to company details, using the add financial year option, and then create a new financial year so that you are able to process with new current financial period. So as you can see, purging and archiving, separate characteristics and separate instances and in way things are handled depending if the year has been purged or the year has been archived. And once again, very important to make a backup before running either general ledger archive or general ledger purge. I do hope this presentation has been useful. Thank you for watching. It's over and out for me and goodbye.